Welcome to a lesson on exact differential equations. Another type of equation that comes up quite often in physics and engineering is an exact equation. A differential equation in the form m of x comma y dx plus n of x comma y dy equals zero, or the form shown here on the right, is an exact differential equation if m of x comma y dx plus n of x comma y dy corresponds to the differential of some function big F. Recall if big F equals c, then differential f is equal to the partial of f with respect to x dx plus the partial of f with respect to y dy equals zero. An exact differential equation is a conservative vector field in which the implicit solution is the potential function big F. To test for an exact differential equation, we check to see if the partial of m with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x. To solve an exact differential equation, we need to find big F, called the potential function, to do this, we solve the following system of equations. The partial of f with respect to x equals m, and the partial of f with respect to y equals n. We can see where these equations come from by comparing differential f and the differential equation. Notice the partial of f with respect to x must equal m, and the partial of f with respect to y must equal n. And the solution will be the equations big F of x comma y equals c. Let's look at some examples. We're asked to find the general solution to two x plus two y dy dx equals zero. Let's first write the differential equation in differential form. We can think of multiplying both sides by dx, which gives us two x dx plus two y dy equals zero. In this form, notice m of x comma y is equal to two x, and n of x comma y equals two y. Next, we check for exactness by checking to see if the partial of m with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x. The partial of m with respect to y is the derivative of two x with respect to y, treating x as a constant. The partial of m with respect to y is zero, and the partial of n with respect to x is the derivative of two y with respect to x, which is also zero. Because the partials are equal, we do have an exact differential equation. Which means now we need to find big F of x comma y equals c, such that the partial of f with respect to x equals m, and the partial of f with respect to y equals n. We can start with either equation. Let's start with the first equation. If we integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x, we can recover most of the function big F, but remember when determining the partial of f with respect to x, we treat y as a constant, and therefore when integrating, instead of having a constant c, we'll have a function of y. So integrating both sides of the first equation with respect to x, we have big F of x comma y equals the integral of two x dx, Integrating two x with respect to x, we have two times x squared divided by two, or x squared, and then again, not plus a constant, but plus a function of y, because we integrated the partial of f with respect to x. And now we'll use the second equation to recover all of the function big F. Well, if we now know big F is equal to x squared plus a of y, if we differentiate big F with respect to y, we differentiate x squared plus a of y with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us zero plus a prime of y, which must equal n of x comma y, which we know is two y. Analyzing this equation, we can see a prime of y must equal two y, and now we can recover a of y by integrating both sides of the equation with respect to y. This gives us a of y is equal to the integral of two y dy, which equals y squared. Now we know big F is equal to x squared plus a of y, and a of y equals y squared, and therefore big F, the potential function, is equal to x squared plus y squared, and therefore the general solution is x squared plus y squared equals c. But let's go ahead and solve the equation for y. We first subtract x squared on both sides, and then we take the square root of both sides of the equation and include a plus or minus, giving us the solutions. y equals the principal square root of the quantity c minus x squared, or y equals negative square root of the quantity c minus x squared. Remember, the solution to a differential equation needs to be a function. Let's look at a second example. Here we have an initial value problem. Let's first write the differential equation in differential form. We can think of cross multiplying, which gives us the quantity x minus one dy equals the quantity negative two x minus y dx. And now setting the equation equal to zero, we add the quantity two x plus y dx to both sides of the equation which gives us the quantity two x plus y dx plus the quantity x minus one dy equals zero. 
Now that we have the differential equation in this form, notice m of x comma y equals two x plus y, n of x comma y equals x minus one. Next, we check for exactness by checking to see if the partial of n with respect to y equals the partial of n with respect to x. The partial of n with respect to y is the derivative of two x plus y with respect to y, treating x as a constant, which gives us one, and the partial of n with respect to x is equal to the derivative of x plus one with respect to x, which is also equal to one. Because the partials are equal, we have an exact differential equation. So now we need to set up and solve the system of equations. Let's go ahead and start with the first equation again. If we know the partial of f with respect to x must equal m, if we integrate both sides of the equation with respect to x, we can recover big F of x comma y, except for a function of y. So integrating both sides of the equation with respect to x, we have big F is equal to the integral of two x plus y dx. Integrating with respect to x, we have x squared plus xy, and then plus a function of y. And now we'll use the second equation to recover all of big F. If we now know big F is equal to x squared plus xy plus a of y, we'll find the partial with respect to y and set it equal to n. The partial of f with respect to y is equal to zero plus x plus a prime of y, or just x plus a prime of y, which must equal n, which is x minus one. Analyzing this equation, notice a prime of y must equal negative one, and if a prime of y is equal to negative one, then a of y must equal the integral of negative one dy, which is equal to negative y. Now we've recovered all of big F, we now know big F is equal to x squared plus xy plus a of y, but a of y is negative y. This gives us big F is equal to x squared plus xy minus y. And therefore the general solution is x squared plus xy minus y equals c. For the next step, we'll determine the constant c using the initial condition, which means we will now substitute zero for x and one for y and solve for c. This gives us c equals negative one, so now we know the particular solution is x squared plus xy minus y equals negative one. Let's go ahead and solve for y. To do this, let's first subtract x squared on both sides of the equation. Next, we'll factor the left by factoring out y, which gives us y times the quantity x minus one equals negative one minus x squared, and then finally we'll divide both sides by x minus one. This gives us y equals the quantity negative one minus x squared divided by the quantity x minus one. Over one and two, we can multiply the numerator and denominator by negative one, which gives us y equals the quantity x squared plus one divided by the quantity one minus x. I hope you found this helpful.